pleasant good day to all of my YouTube followers across the globe. Welcome once again to another YouTube presentation. So, in our customary style, I, Emo Ramesses Bakari, your psychologist and life coach from the magical community of Point Fourteen in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, located in the Southern Caribbean. My mission is to inspire you, to increase your self-confidence, to inspire you, to increase your self-esteem, to inspire you to develop clear thinking and even clearer plans. And this will be done through teaching, through coaching, through counseling, through motivational speaking, feature addresses, and writing. Because you, yes you, are deserving of developing the best version of yourself and we are prepared to partner with you in 2023 to ensure that this becomes a reality. So thank you and welcome once again to our presentation. As usual, we will start off with a motivational word. And the motivational word to you is, as citizens of the world, Wise, there is a higher authority in God. We as citizens in the world, resident in different countries of the world, must always abide by the laws of the land. And the reason why I have shared that motivational word with you, if we disobey and contravene the laws of the land, we may in fact be committing an offense that may be punishable by law. And my topic today, does crime possesses a face? Does crime possesses a face? And sadly, there have been many attempts in many societies throughout the world where an ethnic face is being placed on crime. So as I present, I'm going to develop what I have to say. Mm -hmm. So, by definition, crime is defined as an action or mission that is punishable by law. For example, there are many types of crime, shoplifting, there is you know, breaking and entering, there are robberies, homicides, and a host of other types of crime. Who are the persons who commit crime? All shades of humanity, I repeat, all shades of humanity commit crime. So putting an ethnic face to crime is certainly not sublime. It is innate, insane, and a very dangerous road to travel. Do criminals care about ethnicity? Certainly not. A criminal is always on the lookout for opportunities to exploit, to commit crime. And then there are other types of criminals who we may not see, who are also on the lookout and committing crimes and who may never be caught. So, I repeat to you, the late great Black Stalin said in another song, sufferers do not care about the race, I am saying criminals really do not care about race. Of course, in any group of people in society, there may be racist-minded people among them who may have such orientation. But fundamentally, any opportunity that presents itself to a criminal, they will be quite willing to exploit it. So, I am particularly concerned in the context of Trinidad and Tobago, in the context of the world, where they have tried to put an ethnic face to crime. For example, in Trinidad, you know, many times when crimes are committed, many persons without knowledge of the circumstances assume 
that the song of the black boy, African young man, who is the perpetrator of crime? Now that sometimes they prove itself to be wrong and then they shake their head and say, well, boy, they didn't know. But that is because very subtly an ethnic face has been associated with crime. Now that doesn't give right to other commentators who have taken careful note of presenting a case to show people of different ethnicities who have committed gruesome crimes to make an argument, well, it's not only Africans. Certainly, it's not only Africans who commit crime. All shades of humanity create crime. Well, what really is the objective of making such a comparison? Does it help society? Or does it pose a danger to inflaming society? All right? So people at all levels of society must be responsible for what they say and how they say it. Because in the context of Trinidad and Tobago, there has always been tensions in the underbelly of the country. But unfortunately, you know, through crime, people are killing each other. And as I said, regardless of race, all people are victims of crime. But in terms of, you know, direct racial configuration, we have not really experienced that. But when you look at the, the commentary of people in high office and out of office, sometimes you ask yourself, like they want to change. And if that change is to come, it, rep it will represent the destruction of the society. We will not be able to function. So that is why we must, there must always be maturity around the question of ethnic discussion and racial discussion. And particularly in the context of crime, we need to be very, 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 very careful where that is concerned. For example, the most abominable crime perpetuated against humanity, the Mahafa, representing that most brutal of experiences where about 42 million Africans were uprooted from the African continent. Many died in the Middle Passage to the Caribbean and the Americas. All right? That represents a, a, a blot on humanity that certainly will not be erased. And even the talk and the discussion among many about reparations, reparations cannot even, you know, suffice for the, the, the damages done physically, economically, and the lingering psychological damage that still persists, persists up to this day. All right? So reparations will not salvage the souls of the many that have been destroyed. And one of the points I want to make for those who are calling for reparations, when, if that is to take place, who will be responsible for managing those reparations? And what use will be put to on behalf of the African diaspora to ensure the development? Many of us are not thinking about that. But I mentioned that as a crime because, you know, we're talking about crime, and if we're talking about crime, we have to bring that into the discussion. And also look at the relationships of that to even events that might be happening now. We need to really deepen our discussion about this discussion about crime. And I'm saying, when we look at the United States of America, we have the brilliant work done by Professor Amos Wilson, now deceased, a psychologist, while he was alive, in a brilliant book called Black or Black Violence. And where he used it, where he made the reference where, you know, when you look at the, the size of the African population, and that was, book was done somewhere around the early 1990s, they were most represented in crime, which was totally disproportionate to their numbers in the society. And he posed the question, what really is the underlying reason for that? And he brilliantly made the point that the psychosocial and socioeconomic factors that you know, nurture crime, the statistic faintly can address or prevent the amagadigdom that can befall you know, African communities, not only in America, but across the world, if urgent action is not taken. So we all know that people, of, you know, different ethnic orientations in the United States, if you look at Caucasians versus Africans, for similar crimes, 
the courts treat it differently. And there is all the evidence, a lot of evidence that we can unearth to support the deep set institutional nature of how people are treated. And Professor Wilson made the point that not those psychosocial and socioeconomic factors all propped up on, on the platform of white supremacy has succeeded in painting an African face to crime, which certainly is not correct. In the context of Trinidad and Tobago, yes, a lot of crime takes place among gangs, but are those members of the gangs the only ones who commit crime? What are those about those persons who are committing crime that we never see? What about those persons who are committing crime who are never caught? It does not represent an absence of crime on their behalf. Those persons who may tell you, bring the evidence, that doesn't mean that they may not be involved in crime. Some of them have access to well-paying lawyers that may, you know, safeguard their tracks and end up in a prison any time. But we really need to take a deeper look at this crime situation. And I am particularly concerned for trying to present and discuss crime in an ethnic point of view and trying to link any one ethnic group to the commission of crime. Crime is a serious danger to each and any one of us, regardless of how we look. We have all the evidence before us here in Trinidad and Tobago. From any level you can think about, criminals are attacking the poor, the not so poor, and the wealthy. There is no distinction really being made. So, Mr. Pundit, Mr. Politician, or any other person who is opening their mouth, we need to be very, very careful of the statements that we make. And we must not be headstrong and talking but holding fast to what we believe, especially where we cannot really present the evidence in a way to support what is being said. We all must have a concern, whichever part of the world we are located, to addressing crime in a deep way. And as Professor Wilson so beautifully said, he said that you know, many of the reasons that are put forward, they are bankrupt, they are ineffective, and they are not getting to the root of crime. And some of the typical reasons we hear, you know, poverty, um, drugs, uh, poor parenting, learning disabilities, yes, they play a part, but the question of crime is certainly far more deeper. As we all know, people were not born criminals, so there are a number of con social conditioning arising out of a multiplicity of factors, and there are also deep institutional reasons as cited by uh, Professor Wilson in the context of the United States, where in his words, white supremacy is a driver of crime to, to keep the African in a state of subjugation. So let us grow in maturity. Let us open our minds. Let us come together as a people to address the monster of crime. Because crime does not have an ethnic face. And regardless of how you look, you can be a victim of crime. I am making this up appeal to every one of us in Trinidad and Tobago, across the Caribbean and across the world. Let us really take a different look at this discussion. Let us take a different look at our own responsibility. And let us hold those accountable who are making inane statements to cause more destruction. Let us treat them in the manner they are deserving to be treated and to save humanity from total destruction. Crime does not have an ethnic face. I know this message has registered very, very firmly with you, and I welcome you to comment widely as you view and listen to this presentation. I thank you for listening, and of course, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel, to like, share, and comment on the video. We also encourage you to partake in our 10 week course entitled The Fundamentals of Psychology, costing $300. You can pay it in one part or a part payment arrangement can be worked out. We encourage you to participate in our four-week course entitled The Fundamentals of Public Speaking, costing $1,200 for students and $1,800 for the general public. Or four-week course entitled 
mastering emotional intelligence, costing $1,800 for the general public, for students, and $2,500 for the general public. You can also support us via the information flashing across your screen or via the YP link. You can also call or email us to book a counseling or coaching appointment. And you can also buy our book entitled Conversation, costing 130 45 EC or 15 United States dollars. So there are multiplicity of options for you to support us. You have supported us and we thank you for us. We encourage you to encourage your networks to subscribe to this channel. Do not allow yourself alone to benefit from the, the powerful messages that we are producing. And we know that you will render the necessary support to ensure that we develop into one of the most powerful channels on the YouTube network. So we thank you for listening. Remember, give us a call at 1-868-778-5141. one 778 or email us at leadership with a difference at gmail.com. I remind you once again, crime does not discriminate. Whether you are African, Syrian, Caucasian, mixed or what have you, crime does not discriminate. And let us be more responsible before it is too late. Thank you for listening and stay tuned to another powerful presentation next week. Praise God. Bye and thank you.